You have great intentions with your habits. I know you do. You want to have that perfect morning routine. You want to get things done. You want to actually accomplish your dreams. But the truth of the matter is there are probably things that you're secretly doing that are making your habits harder to achieve. And that is exactly what I'm going to help you guys with today. First of all, if you don't know who I am, my name is Julia. I make content about mindful productivity and fashion, kind of whatever I want. <laughs> I work a nine to five in the video game marketing industry. I am a part-time content creator managing not one, but two channels and I still live at home with my family and have to find time to manage my mental health and learning and all of those things so a lot going on but using a lot of the strategies that I'm going to teach you in this video I am still able to find time to see my friends on the weekends make new friends play video games every night enjoy content that I enjoy guilt-free so that is exactly what we're going to talk about today but first of all I would like to reference a little book that I have right here called Atomic Habits in this book he talks about four things that every habit needs to have. It needs to be obvious, attractive, easy to achieve, and satisfying. However, James, love your book, but let's be so real. That is way easier said than done. I feel like if every habit that we implemented had each of those four criteria, why would anyone do anything else? You know what I mean? We would all be productivity machines. We would all feel happy all the time. And the reality is life just doesn't work like that. So we're gonna talk about how to go around those obstacles. The first mistake that you're secretly making is you aren't reducing the amount of decisions that you have to make in a day. Habits are as good as the decisions that we make to encourage them. So if you're watching this video and you're like, okay, I've struggled with habits before, I need some help, as part of the video, is probably gonna resonate with you the most. So let me give you guys a little story time. When I started my workout journey about two, three years ago now at this point, I used to wake up and feel immediately frustrated that I was not motivated to work out. Like my first emotion when I would get out of bed was, ugh, I wish I had more energy. Ugh, I wish I was more motivated, da 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 However, that frustration quickly turned into anger by the time that I got to the bathroom, had to brush my teeth, and that anger came with me to my closet where I would walk past the mirror and I would see my reflection and be like, okay, that is making me sad because I'm pulling out this workout clothing, I'm putting it on myself, I'm feeling self-conscious, I'm feeling like I haven't accomplished my goals yet. And by the time that I got to tying my running shoes on, I had already dragged myself through so many negative emotions that it almost didn't even matter that I had gotten out the door because I had so much emotional baggage from just getting through the morning. And I found out recently that there's a phrase for this sensation, which is called perceived incompetence. These emotions were not obvious at the time. This is years of retrospect, years of trying to figure out what those underlying emotions were that led me to this point. So at the time I was filled with all of these really unclear ideas of who I was supposed to be, but I didn't have a very clear vision of what I was actually trying to accomplish. So it was just frustration, anger, sadness. And I was stuck in this cycle where experiencing those emotions had become a habit in and of itself. This is when I realized I was self-sabotaging in the form of these decisions. Every day from 7, 8 a.m., I was already putting baggage on myself. So I decided I need a little bit of a different approach. And that is when I just sat down and wrote down my goal. My goal was ultimately to be healthier with my exercises. So what does it take to exercise consistently? Well, that goal of working out more includes some sub steps. So you've got things like the getting up out of bed part, the filling your water bottle part, picking out a workout outfit, tying your shoes, and so on and so forth. But I went through this whole routine and figured out how can I make this as decision free as possible. I want my mornings to start on autopilot regardless of how I feel. And it's not to say that your feelings aren't important, but they can take you away from your end goal a lot of the time. So that's what we're going to work on overcoming. For starters, I set my alarm on the other side of the room. So there was not a decision of whether I'm gonna snooze or not. I have to get up and I am already out of bed. Decision done. Then I would put my workout clothes on top of my phone the night before. So I had to pick up my workout clothes to turn my alarm off. So I get dressed, I go downstairs to my kitchen and inside my fridge, my water bottle is already filled up. It's got ice in it and it is cool and ready to go. So I just grab it. Now in terms of deciding my workout, this part's a little bit more up to you. But personally, I have two options. If the weather is good, I will go out and do an interview 
interval run, which is basically where you do a power walk for a minute, sprint for 30 seconds, and you alternate between those two. And then if the weather is bad, I will do a workout on the 7 app, which usually I'll do like two or three of them. So it kind of is equal to what an interval run would be for me. The point I really want to get to is that removing decisions for little silly things along the way is going to help free up space in your brain to actually enjoy what you are doing. But there is an alternate side to this, and that is called habit overload, which is kind of the next part of this video. One of the worst things you can do when you're setting goals is set too many at once. I want you to imagine that one of your goals is, I'm gonna set a morning routine. At its core, that's not a bad goal. But you have to realize that a morning routine has a lot of steps to it. TikTok wants us to think it looks something like this, where you're waking up at 5 a.m., you're making a green smoothie, you're doing two hours of workouts, then you magically have a full face of minimalist makeup and you're like journaling for 30 minutes. Like, oh, if none of those things are already habits for you, I need you to step out of that mindset immediately and realize, okay, we, we're taking baby steps to get there. We're not gonna get that all done in one day. Sorry, that's just not how habit forming works. That is a great way to self implode your brain. Memorizing a habit is kind of like memorizing a recipe. You're probably gonna have an easier time memorizing the recipe if you remember how to actually put the ingredients together rather than if you're just trying to imagine and remember what, what ingredient list you need to put that recipe together. I don't know if that metaphor made sense, bear with me. But going back to this morning routine thing, you have to realize that each part of the morning routine is a habit in and of itself. So waking up at 5 a.m., if you do that for just two weeks, it is going to make the next part, which is waking up and then making a green smoothie a lot quicker after another two weeks. And you go and work out. See how the morning routine is falling into place? Now imagine if you try to do that every single day. It would probably take you months of starting over, starting from scratch, forgetting things along the way to actually make that habit a reality. And that's if you even do it. To be completely honest, it's way harder to put yourself in that position. So if you can give your sole attention to each one of these habits, you will find that each one becomes easier to accomplish. They will flow more evenly together. And each one is going to become a longer term commitment right in front of your eyes. I wrote this little tidbit down when I was journaling and planning for this video. So I really want to share it with you guys because it is very relevant. It goes like this. The key to making a habit work is not just to schedule them, but to make them so automatic that your body instinctively performs them. That is a true habit, baby. That is how we do it here. All right, apologies are in order. I had to leave yesterday, and so I changed my shirt and my earrings because one's in the laundry and the other broke. So successful night out, I guess. <laughs> um, but with that all aside, this transitions perfectly into the next part of this video, which is about distractions. I have a bit of a philosophy here that distractions can be a good thing. So for example, I have a horrible attention span in the afternoon. Typically I have an energy peak from like 10 to one and then again from like six to nine. But that late afternoon time period, I don't know what it is, like a sugar crash or something else, but it is very challenging to get through. So one of the ways that I stay disciplined and I keep on top of any habits that regard my afternoon is I set an intentional distraction. Now this can be something like an educational podcast. It can be something like lo-fi music. The key is to avoid things that are overly distracting and instead complement the work that you are doing. So unfortunately, this might not be as applicable if you have to do very heavy brain intensive work in the afternoon. But if you're doing things like updating spreadsheets, you're on meetings, you're on calls, this is great because nine out of 10 times, intentional distractions can actually get you further on your goals where you're not just like checking out or scrolling TikTok or wasting your time during your low energy moments in the day. However, I'm gonna be completely honest here, distractions can get out of hand. So here's what you're gonna do if you tend to fall into your distractions. You're gonna set a timer for 15 minutes, tackle whatever task you have scheduled for that low energy time. At the end of that 15 minute timer, if I ended up being zoned out and more focused on the distraction, I will turn it off because it's better to waste 15 minutes than let that unravel and end up impacting your productivity for the rest of the day. I use a very similar method though to remove distractions from my life. For example, TikTok, the endless scroll, Instagram stories, those things have made my attention span take a tremendous hit. It's embarrassing, but it's something that I'm actively working on, so I'm hoping it'll get better. Whenever I open a distract app, so a TikTok, Reddit, Twitter, whatever it may be, I have my phone automatically set up so it sets a timer for five minutes. Now, there's a little feature, I have a TikTok, which I'll link down below, ironically, about how to do this. When that five minute timer is up, it'll actually close my phone entirely. So yes, I can reopen it. I guess that option is always there, but the distraction, the sudden abrupt cutoff of audio is usually enough to get me off my device and help reality check me and think, 
oh, okay, that was five minutes that I just wasted. If it was intentionally wasted time, that's perfectly all right. At least I have that moment process and be aware that this is chill scrolling time. Like I'm not trying to get something else done and I can forgive myself for that. Or I had something more to do. That moment, that reality check is like, oh, okay, let me, you know, reassess my setting, figure out what I need to do. Maybe I need some water. Maybe I need a bathroom break. Let me clear my mind and come back to the task that I am doing. Definitely give it a shot if you're someone that struggles with distractions. There are also apps on the market like Screen Zen that will do this for you. So that way you get kind of this guilt-free screen time. And very recently, I've actually scheduled like 12 to five where I straight up cannot open social media on my phone. It'll say that it is blocked. It'll give me a little motivational message. And it's like, okay, you can come back after 5 p.m. No scrolling during the day. And it's funny because just after doing it for, I think it's been about a week and a half now, I don't even instinctually want to open social media in the middle of the day. And that has been a habit that I've been trying to break for years. So definitely give it a shot. I promise you there is some true science to why this works. We're talking about avoiding distractions and what to do tactically day to day. But another reason that you might be failing your habits is you don't have a roadmap for them. Habits can feel very daunting and very unmotivating to accomplish if you don't actually have a true innate reason. For example, if I set a goal that I'm going to drink a gallon of water a day, I don't currently have an intrinsic reason that I would want to drink that much water a day because it doesn't currently build up to any deliberate goal that I have. So of course I'm not going to want to do it because the second that I have a tough date, my brain is going to go, um, no thank you. I don't want to do that. So here's a little metaphor for your habit. Think of your habit as a road trip. You're going to pick a starting point, which is most likely your house, and you're going to pick an end destination. Let's say it's Las Vegas, baby. Once you have starting point and ending point, you figure out destinations and things that you want to see along the way. But imagine that you planned a road trip where you planned all of the things that you wanted to see, but you didn't actually know where you were going to start or stop that journey. You're probably going to end up wasting a lot of gas, a lot of money, and like, what is the point? The point is it's going to take you a lot longer. So again, not a perfect metaphor, but your habits are kind of like a road trip in this way that you need to know where you're starting and you need to know where you want to end up. But answering the five W's, the who, what, where, when, why of anything that you're trying to achieve. Maybe you don't need it for every single mini habit, but for the bigger things that you want to do, like building a morning routine, becoming an active person, becoming a productive person. These are the kind of things that you want goal posts for. And I promise you, your habit is going to be set in stone twice as fast if you can confidently answer each one of those five things. I've actually started at this point just opening an Apple Notes for any new goal that I want to accomplish. And I try to answer these questions. And if it's not clear yet, I give myself some time. I think on it. I figure out what I need to do. Do I need to research? Do I need to plan? And then I tackle the problem with that context in mind. Talking about that gallon of water is making me very thirsty. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm high. I'm hydrated, I'm hydrated. So listen, we've just spent this whole video talking about very specific tactics and things that you need to do, but most important one is have some fun. It is so easy to think about what you should be doing. You are not consistently enjoying the habit that you're trying to pursue. You're not letting yourself feel that success, that adrenaline rush of, oh my gosh, I'm actually doing the thing. That's where I want you to take a step back and just breathe. It's gonna be okay. Again, like I mentioned, if you're really stuck, you can always Always pick up Apple Notes or your Notes app on your phone and get very, very specific. And just think about how each one of those steps makes you feel. And maybe, just maybe, that habit might not be something that you need to focus on right now. Try to really align with your values, celebrate your small wins, think about what moves the needle in your day-to-day -day life, what makes your quality of life better, and realize that if you miss a day, it's okay. I personally recommend not skipping more than two days in a row, unless of course you're on vacation or something like that. I get that sometimes you need to be flexible, but be kind to yourself. You will be kindest to yourself when you set yourself up for long-term success and long-term joy. Habits are supposed to be natural patterns. So if you're constantly forcing yourself into it, reevaluate, figure out what you can do to make it easier. And you will know that a habit has become a habit when it feels out of place 
and out of your routine to not do the thing. I will say this also works in reverse with identifying bad habits. I've definitely seen a few of these in my own life, but again, we were all a work in progress. We're all doing our best here. So in the comments down below, let me know what habits you're working on this quarter, this month, this week, this season, whatever it may be. I would love to read them down in the comment section below. And if you want to see more mindful productivity videos like this one, hit that subscribe button. It lets me know to make more of these. And and again, I will see your beautiful faces in the next one. Bye, lovelies.